Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, thank you so, so much for joining me. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing the mid-year book freak out day. So I have been seeing so many people do this on booktube and I've absolutely been loving watching everyone's videos. It's so interesting to find out, you know, what they loved, what character they liked who was a new to them author, what was their biggest disappointment. All of it is just so much fun and I wanted to kind of jump in. This is my very first time doing this video and I'm really excited to share how my year's been so far. So the first question on the list is best book you've read so far. And I was thinking about it and I've read so many good books, but I have to go with Even If It Hurts by Sam Mariano. I've talked about this book so much, but every time I think about it, I can't stop thinking about it. It was, so wild and crazy and in true Sam fashion she really hit it home um it follows it's kind of it's pretty much like a high school bully romance but it's like much more than that I would say it even ventures into like domestic thriller territory but it follows um Dare Audrey and then Dare's girlfriend Anae and in the opening of the book Anae and Audrey have an interaction that doesn't go very well in turn, Anae goes to her boyfriend, Dare, and asks him to get in on a bet to pretty much take Audrey down, to make her fall in love with him and then destroy her in the process. And he, after some kind of interactions in the little first part of the book, he agrees to do this. So what ensues after that is him kind of following through with his end of the deal, but him also becoming super fascinated by Audrey and then that turning into like a deep obsession. And Sam knows how to write obsessed anti-heroes like it's just her niche she knows what she's doing and dare pretty much top the cake um you know there's carter mahoney there's mateo there's calvin from descent uh dare she really took it there uh, i really felt like she took us to a whole other solar system with this guy he is crazy psycho sociopathic and in the end he was not going to let anyone get in his way and he was going to get audrey this book also opens up her new series, The Coastal Elite, which I'm very excited to read more of by her. So that would be the best book that I've read so far this year. The next question is best sequel you've read so far. So, you know, kind of like next book in a series. And honestly, it has to be Give Me More by Sarah Kate. This series has been absolutely exceptional and each book just levels up and gets that much better. I'm so happy for Sarah. Um, these books are absolutely just killing it in the store, in the charts, and this one follows Drake, Hunter, and Isabel. This is an MFM, MFM um, book, and it's much more than that though. And so Drake and Hunter are best friends. They've known each other since childhood. Hunter uh, meets Isabel at quite a young age as well. I think in their teens, they get together. So it's always been the three of them. Hunter and Drake have always been best friends, but Hunter ended up marrying Isabel. And Drake has always had some underlying feelings that he's tried to work out. And whereas Hunter has had the same feelings as well, but they both have processed these in very different ways. Hunter had a different upbringing and it really impacted how he came to be in his own feelings. And this was a beautiful story. This was Sarah opening up the pages and just laying out the vulnerability. Like Drake, oh, Drake, he was everything and more. And he was such a huge catalyst for this whole thing coming together. And he was such a crutch throughout. I loved each of the characters, but Drake really made it. And this was a beautiful love story that came together in the end. And it was so lovely to see how much they all cared about each other. And they may have not been able to share it right off the bat. Hunter really had to work out his feelings, but it was just such an impactful book and I really enjoyed it. And I can't wait for what's to come. But yeah, that has to be the, honestly, the best sequel that I've read so far this year. The next question is, is a new release you want to read but haven't read yet? So I have a bunch, <laughs> but I'm gonna just go with two for right now every summer after. I don't know much about it, but it's like a summer romance where they, I think they have to keep coming back to each other and something happens maybe. And then between hello and goodbye is about kind of like a party girl that goes to Hawaii and she meets this firefighter. And I think he kind of like sets her on a whole new path. So I'm just excited for both of those. Um, the next question is uh, most anticipated release for the last half of the year. So I've got three. 
<laughs> the first book that I have is It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. I have been waiting and waiting and waiting and she answered our prayers. <laughs> I think she got enough pressure and she decided to write this book. This is the continuation of Atlas and Lily, but it's told from Atlas's point of view and I am salivating for it. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Um, the next book that I have is Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. I mean, I am ready for a new Kennedy Ryan book. I really, really am. I've got real set to be read in my TBR coming up. So I'm really excited about that. This one, I believe is a marriage, not uh, maybe a marriage in trouble, but they've already been divorced and they're kind of coming back to each other and like co-parenting and all that stuff. So I'm really here for that. Then I also have Pieces of a Life by Jewel E. Ann. Now I am a huge fan of her life series. She has The Life That Mattered and The Life You Stole. Both of those books were absolutely wild. They had such otherworldly plots that really hooked me and like really made me question what exactly I was reading because I loved every second of it, but I did not expect the layers of craziness that she put into those books. So this next book sounds really, really good. It follows a couple, I think he's like an FBI investigator and she's like, she, um, I can't remember the name, but she like takes after she's in the criminal world as well, but she keeps having dreams or something. So it sounds pretty wild. It sounds like it's falling in line with the life series. So I can't wait for that. <laughs> so the next one is the biggest disappointment of the year. This is always interesting because it's like you go into books and yeah, I mean, sometimes they surprise you. Sometimes it's just what you thought. And then sometimes, yeah, they they didn't turn out how you thought. So I'm going to have to go with The Confidence of Wildflowers by Michaelia Smeltzer. Um, I went into this like really excited and I definitely think her writing is excellent. I just, the story didn't work for me and there was definitely some triggers in there that I wasn't expecting in the end. Um, I feel that should be probably posted for people just so they're aware of what happens. Um, a lot happened in this story and I just feel like it was a lot coming at me at once. There was a lot of grief, a lot of trauma, um, and then just stuff that happened in the third act of the book between the main couple um, involving a death uh, really just kind of set me on a different path. So unfortunately it didn't work for me. I didn't move on to the second book and I probably won't. So yeah. Next one is biggest surprise of the year. And I'm actually gonna have to go with The Guy on the Left by Kate Stewart. This was an interesting book um, just because I don't necessarily always do, um, you know, pregnancy trope, that kind of a thing. But this one was a bit different where this follows a football star in high school who unknowingly um, hooks up with a teacher in it, like as, a, as in they have a one night stand and he doesn't tell her that he's a student and she goes to the school and realizes that he is a student and by this time she's already pregnant. So this opens up a really different kind of a story where he really has to make up for lost time and he really has to win her back or you know gain access to his child's life and Kate wrote this really well and it was full of angst it was really steamy and I really appreciated it I think it was the first one the guy on the right I didn't really like that one um that was a bit too uh friends to loverish for me but this one worked wonders for me. So I can't recommend that one enough. And it definitely surprised me because I didn't think I was probably going to go for that trope, but it worked really well. Uh, the next question is favorite new author you discovered this year. And it has to be Mila Finelli who wrote Mafia Mistress and Mafia Darling. I just devoured this, this series. It started off kind of as a duet, but now we've got a third book coming. So this is obviously, uh, follows Francesca and Fausto and Francesca is supposed to marry Fausto's son. And he decides that he wants her for himself and takes her to Italy. And I just loved every second of it. And I just think that um, Mila did a really good job writing it. And it was just a really, really, really fun time. The next question is, is my newest fictional crush? So many crushes, so little time. I would have to go with Drake from Give Me More. Um, he really did give me more honestly. Um, he carried a lot on his back in that story and his vulnerability and his open heart really won me over and the steam didn't hurt anything. And he just really, really grew and grew and grew and his heart was so big. And I just think that he is so fantastic. So I can't wait to kind of see cameos from him and maybe her last book. <laughs> The next one is um, newest favorite character. And I'm going to have to honestly go with Fausto from Mafia Mistress and Mafia Darling. 
Daddy Fausto honestly rocked my world. That that those books were just a really fun time for me. I enjoyed every every friggin second. It was wild. His uh, his dirty talk is on another level. He can talk dirty, filthy Italian to me all day, and I would eat it up with a spoon. So he can keep going with that filthy mouth. <laughs> uh, the next question is: Is a book that made you cry? Hands down, it's got to be Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. Um, I actually did a reading vlog for this book, so I will link that down below if you want to go check it out. But this is a YA um, taboo coming of age book. I wouldn't classify it as a romance, um, but it is. It does have uh, you know triggers in it, and there it is taboo in the sense that it is about a brother and sister falling in love. Uh, that book just tore me tore me apart. So that definitely made me cry. The next question on the list is a book that made you happy. And I'm going to have to go with Always Been You by QB Tyler. I just loved every minute of this book. I loved James. I loved Gabrielle. I loved them together. The tension and the angst and the steam and the longing. Every page I was like living for it. I was living for his possessiveness. I was living for her lusting after her, her adopted brother. I just thought it was so like fantastic. It is taboo. And QB just did such a good job with like you know, them going home for the holidays and then, you know, them kind of exploring each other before they go home for the holidays. And it was just like, once they got home, it was like they had to fight their feelings. And I just really enjoyed it. It made me so thrilled. I could not recommend it enough. And I definitely want to do a reread. So the next question is, is most beautiful book you've received or bought this year? And this one was tough because I, I have two. The first one that I have is A Love Letter to Whiskey by Candy Steiner. This was her fifth anniversary edition when she included Jamie's POV in the back. I just full stop, like love the aesthetic of the cover. I love the colors. I love the font, everything. I just think that it was just such a classical touch to a fifth anniversary book. And it's absolutely stunning. I just love the font on the back. It's just really pretty and I like it on my shelf. <laughs> the next book that I have is Music Lights and Never After by C.L. Matthews. Um, I just love everything about this cover. I love the color. I love the font. I love him. Um, she's got really, really, really beautiful, like just beginnings of her chapters. And then she's even got like words there. It's just really, really stunning. And I just love every ounce of this as well. So these both look really nice on my shelf and I'm happy to have them in the book fam. And the last question is books you need to read by the end of the year. And there's a lot of books that I have to read by the end of the year, but there's one series that I has crossed my mind that has been on my radar for a long time. And I recently just bought all of the series on Kindle and that is the Off Balance series by Lucia Franco. Um, this one has been on my list for a while. I started reading the first book, I think about a year ago, and I just got distracted. It. I only got a couple chapters in and then I just put it down. So I'm back in it to win it. Um, I am going to hold myself accountable because I really am curious to see what all the fuss is about, about Kova. So hold my feet to the fire. Keep me accountable. Tell me why you love it. And that's definitely a series that I want to finish by the end of the year. So that covers all the questions for the mid-year book freak out tag. Tell me what books you liked. Tell me what characters you liked. Did you have any disappointments? Tell me all about it in the comments. I would love if you could give this video a like. If you want to subscribe, if you feel called to do so, I would be so grateful. And I'll see you in my next video.